In obstetrical birth injury cases, we often have to explain to the jury the process of a normal labor and delivery and orient them to understand how things can go wrong. In a delivery, the placenta, which is usually located up inside of the uterus, is the blood supply and oxygen supply for the baby through the umbilical cord. When the placenta doesn't function properly, which can occur in some pregnancies, the babies cannot receive enough oxygen or blood and there can be injury to the brain. Sometimes this occurs rather abruptly, such as when the placenta suddenly separates from the uterine wall before the baby is delivered. Or if the cord prolapses through the birth canal as the baby's head is coming down, it can get trapped against the baby's head, kink, and cut off the blood supply. Or just on other occasions where the cord gets wrapped around the neck or another body part, it can kink and cut off blood supply. When this occurs in a very short and severe fashion, there's a particular type of injury that can occur to the brain in the midbrain area as opposed to the cerebral cortex. When an injury occurs to the midbrain, it affects the motor centers and coordination. And these babies come out with true cerebral palsy, where often the cerebral cortex is spared, and so they're mentally and cognitively normal, but because of an injury to a particular part of the brain where nerve signals have to be coordinated to come down into the spinal cord, they can have a fairly severe form of cerebral palsy. And we have to relate all of this back to the process of labor and delivery to show how the doctor's actions or inactions or the nurse's inattention to the fetal monitor strip, to the baby's heartbeat during labor, show that the negligence caused the injury to the baby's brain.